Good afternoon, all, and um, welcome to the first webinar in the special webinar series for Genetics Day on the Hill participants, um, as well as individuals interested in proactive advocacy and the hot topics currently circulating on the Hill. Um, my name is Andrea Cornell, and I am the Advocacy and Health Policy Coordinator at Genetic Alliance, and I'm very happy to introduce today's educational webinar entitled Educating Members of Congress. Today's program will be broken primarily into three parts. Uh, first, we, I will provide a quick overview of our upcoming Genetics Beyond the Hill event, which takes place on Thursday, July 16th. The overview will focus primarily on the logistics and how participants will be navigating the Hill for the event. It'll be very fast. Um, then I will turn it over to Karen Hendricks, Director of uh, Policy Development at the Trust for America's Health, to provide you with an educational presentation on meeting with congressional offices and strategies for success in communicating with policymakers and really making an impact in the policymaking process. Well then, the third component will be um, time for questions and answers. So without any further delay, I will dive into the logistics for Genetics Down the Hill and then turn it over to Karen. Uh, so let's get started with the um, Genetics Down the Hill main page. This page here, um, you may all be very familiar with this um, for those of you who are actually registered for Genetics Beyond the Hill. Um, this, this page includes a lot of helpful information um, about the event. Um, our fourth annual Genetics Beyond the Hill is going to take place next Thursday, July 16th from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Reserve Officers Association on Capitol Hill. Um, the location is really ideal. It's just across the street from the Senate office buildings and a 10-minute walk to the House office buildings. Um, Genetics Down the Hill is truly a unique Hill experience. Um, I've had the pleasure of participating and coordinating all four of our Genetics Days, and I can honestly say that the day continues to evolve and flex and adapt in the same ways as Advocacy on the Hill and really the gen genetics community has. Um, participants represent the cross-section of the genetics and health community, um, including industry, health professionals, members of disease-specific organizations, policy shops, researchers, um, and interested individuals and families. Um, a lot of students come as well. Um, so it's really a great networking event as well. Um, right now we have about 100 individuals registered, but um, the numbers just keep growing. So um, we're hope planning on closing the registration at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day on this Monday. So uh, to give you an overview of really how the day shapes up, um, upon registration, Genetics Day participants are placed in small groups based upon geographic region. Um, we will have some groups that represent primarily one state, uh, which includes um, our Michigan group or our Massachusetts group, for example. Um, and then other groups will cover um, regions, um, including you know, Washington State and Oregon, for example, or Florida and Georgia. Um, each group is designated a group leader whose primary role is to facilitate collaborations among group members as well as conversations with congressional offices during appointments. The majority of these group leaders have volunteered to serve in this capacity based upon their experiences on Capitol Hill, um, but others have been um, asked or uh, even nominated to help facilitate based upon their abilities to engage groups and facilitate collaborations. Um, so they'll play a really um, interesting role for Genetics Day. Um, at this point, and you can see this is kind of the overview of the um, event, but um, we're going to move now to the program for Genetics Day. It recently became available um, on the Genetic Alliance website. Um, just to quickly review it, we're not going to spend too much time on it. Um, like I said, the event begins at 8.30 at the Reserve Officers Association. Um, when participants arrive to check in, they'll be given their group number and a binder of participant materials, which includes talking points, your group's agenda of appointments, the directions for getting around the hill and such. Um, groups will eat breakfast with their designated group um, at their tables in the ballroom. We'll have a short presentation during breakfast where um, after a few words from Sharon Terry, um, President and CEO of Genetic Alliance, I'll give everyone a tour of their binders and an overview of the talking points. This year we'll be discussing key issues in healthcare reform. Um, an overview of the issues will be provided in Thursday's webinar, uh, which you'll learn more about at the end of today's program. Uh, we'll then turn it over to the group leaders. Um, we will have prepared talking points for five key issues in health reform, spanning health IT, public access, comparative effectiveness research, funding, um, and genetic testing. Based upon the interests and experiences within each group, group leaders will help group members identify two to three topics the group wants to discuss during their health visits. Um, this is very similar to last year where we did kind of the choose your own adventure. Um, your appointments with congressional offices will be based largely upon the members that are in your group and what your group wants to speak about. 
Um, at 9.45, um, so moving down the program, at 9.45, um, groups will depart for the first set of three appointments with congressional offices, um, following an agenda that was supplied for them in their participant binders. Each group will have their own agenda of appointments. Um, we'll be visiting both the House and Senate offices this year, but um, like last year, and like I said earlier, each group is unique based upon the members of the group, um, and we wanted to ensure that each individual got to see their um, representative and visit their representative's office. And so um, each, like I said, um, each list of appointments will really be largely dictated by the group members. Um, you'll have the name of the staffer of the congressional office you're visiting, their relevant committee appointments and bill sponsorship information um, as relevant to the topics that we'll be discussing. Um, group leaders will also have um, genetic alliance bags containing briefing materials to leave behind at each congressional office. At 12.15 um, for our lunch briefing, we will return for a lunch presentation from our keynote, which is being finalized now and we hope to announce in the next few days. Um, we'll have a photo of genetics day on the Hill participants on Cap Capitol Hill during that lunch period, which is different from previous years. We used to do it at the end of the day. Um, at 1.45, um, participants will um, move to their last set of three appointments for the day. Um, the event will really end with a debrief led by Sharon Terry. Um, so I hope that this um, kind of overview of this program was helpful, and like I said, um, the program is going to be available, um, or the program is available on the Genetics Day on the Hill um, primary website. Um, just a last note, um, we've created a frequently asked questions page um, from the Genetics Day on the Hill website. You'll see it, the Genetics Day on the Hill FAQ. You'll see um, that at the bottom, um, near the bottom of your page underneath the um, buttons for the event. Um, but you'll see the FAQ and we hope that that is really helpful. Um, We'll have, like I said, on Thursday, July 9th, we'll have a webinar on the topics for Genetics Day. Um, but hopefully that program overview that I just provided to you was helpful in terms of knowing what to expect for the day. Um, this FAQ that's shown on your screen now um, is really robust based upon feedback that we've gotten from last year. We're continually adding to it, too. So um, check back or um, feel free to contact me if you have any questions that, not, that is not answered by this FAQ. And um, we can certainly add those questions as well. So at this point, um, I will turn it over to Karen. Uh, Karen Hendricks is the Director of Policy Development at the Trust for America's Health, a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization with a mission to save lives by protecting the health of every community and working to make disease prevention a national priority. Um, she just recently had this exciting career change. Um, for the past 17 years, Karen was an Assistant Director in the Department of Federal Affairs for the American Academy of Pediatrics. Um, so we're so glad that um, Karen is able to join us for today. Uh, she'll provide an overview of Congress, discuss the legislative process, and share strategies for success in communicating with policymakers and making an impact in the policymaking process. Um, because we have a PAC program for today, you can access her bio online at the Genetic Alliance webinar page, the same web page you use to register for this webinar. Uh, so I want to give a big thank you to Karen for joining us for today's call. Um, without any further delay, um, Karen, we will turn it over to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Great. Um, and thanks to all of you for the invitation um, once again. As was just um, stated, I have been in this new capacity for uh, a little less than a week. So um, I'm trying to get used to the phone system and the computers, so do bear with me. Um, what I thought I would first do is give a quick overview of the uh, climate in, uh, in D.C. and uh, what you will see next week when you arrive, and a little bit about the um, advocacy tools. And I often start with this slide, um, and it, it doesn't seem to matter in either administration um, whether it's it, the, the duck and cover clearly is the same uh, principle. And uh, keeping in mind that as constituents, and you are all constituents from your representative states, you really do present what is the real world, and then everything else is um, not the real world uh, in, uh, at the Capitol. Um, a lot has changed, at least uh, from the administration's perspective, as we um, well know. Uh, and the, the trials and tribulations, as indicated in this particular slide from past presidents, 
um, says a, a, a whole lot. This administration has um, a what I call um, a series of mega issues um, plus one. Um, as you can well see, and you know from all of us know from personal experience, there's growing unemployment. Um, we've gone through and are still continuing to go through an economic bailout that the administration has taken leadership on. There's the ownership of the automobile industry, and there's ownership of banks. Uh, hopefully, there will be health care reform at some point uh, before the end of this year. Next week starts a Supreme Court uh, nominee. And, uh, you know, and climate change, energy issues. So the plate has been very full, um, inclusive of health care reform. And let us not forget that we really do have one real life um, disaster that has been um, put upon us in, uh, with H1N1, the so-called swine flu, but I'm trying not to use that word because if in fact there's a vaccine, we don't want to call it a, vac a the swine flu vaccine. If any of, uh, of you, and I'm not sure any of you are, are old enough to remember the 1976 swine flu vaccine, that didn't go so well. So um, the H1N1 pandemic at this point is uh, a huge issue for this administration and for um, all discussions on, on prevention. Um, so with that as a, ba a backdrop, and looking at the 111th Congress, that this is its first session, and there are two sessions for every Congress, in about 30 seconds, um, we will have the 58th Democrat, um, uh, I was about to say Senator Biden, but now Vice President Biden is sitting in the chair getting ready to um, uh, swear in uh, Al Franken, who will make the 58th Democrat and the two independents, as you all know, um, have voted with the uh, Democrats for the, the most part. So that ratio was now 60 to 40. But in reality, because two members of the Senate, Senators um, Byrd and Kennedy, have been out, um, I, I should say, on a bill passed uh, many years ago on family leave because they've both been very ill, um, that ratio is really um, uh, 58 uh, Democrats. Um, on the House side, while these numbers are pretty far um, apart, reasonably speaking, um, none of us should stay very excited about that. In typical transition years, which are the off-year elections, which will be held in 2010, the party in the majority usually loses seats. And when you have the majority party as Democrats in the White House and in the House and Senate, the probability of those numbers staying at 255 to 178, um, you should see a pickup in uh, Republicans. That's normally how it has um, gone. Uh, we now do have the 10th new senator, Senator, um, no longer Senator-elect. Uh, Franken, I'm trying to do two things, look at the TV and talk to you. So we now do have officially um, a, a full complement in the Senate. The House and Senate leadership has remained the same over the last, um, this, this second session, this second Congress, so the 110th and now the 111th. So if any of you are from uh, Nevada or Kentucky, California, um, the San Francisco area, um, or uh, Ohio, uh, and you're planning to visit your congressional delegations, uh, it would be very important to make sure you, you visit with the leadership as well. Um, as noted, the Democrats are in the majority uh, in both the House and the Senate. What makes that Im important is that they determine what the congressional agenda will be and, and what the schedule will be. So they'll determine when bills go to the House and bills go to the Senate floor. 
Um, however, I still maintain that the most important thing is bipartisanship and bipartisan cooperation. And uh, this is probably the, oh, the fifth year I have used this line, and nothing has changed. Um, there is not a good deal of bipartisanship going, um, going on. Um, in essence, it's, it's just not so good. And that really will bear out uh, as you look at health care reform uh, in particular. The makeup of this Congress um, has remained um, in its breakdown for uh, race and ethnicity has remained the same. Uh, however, the most um, notable is the increase in the number of women in the House and women in the Senate. This is at a historic proportion. And um, from what we're hearing, there will probably, probably be some more uh, women who will be running in, in 2010, uh, something I would encourage all of us to think about. In uh, thinking about health care for just a moment and looking at Congress, rest assured um, with this number of physicians in the House and the two in the um, Senate, there are not a lot of uh, experts, shall we say, on the provision of health care, let alone health reform. Uh, it, it is this handful out of 535 total members of the House and the Senate and probably you know, two to three handfuls of congressional staff that may have some degree of medical and or health and health prevention expertise. Um, so if any of you here, too, are going to the states of these members, this will be most important for you. Uh, the 111th uh, Congress, the key committees that are dealing with health and health care reform uh, are on the uh, Senate side, uh, the Health Committee, Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions. And many of you who participated in the work on um, uh, the GINA bill last year and the years before and the years before that are most familiar with the Health Committee. The one notable difference, as mentioned, is um, on health reform, Senator Chris Dodd from Connecticut is the acting chair. Why that becomes important is Chris Dodd has a really tough race um, coming up in, in 2010. And um, hopefully he will not get too distracted as the, the months go by. And an, another reason of trying to push the Senate and push the House to move forward. Uh, as in the Senate and uh, also in the House, there are two major committees of jurisdiction. Um, the so-called authorizing committees, so that's Energy and Commerce and the Health Committee, and then the Tax Writing Committee, um, Finance and Ways and Means on the House side. Uh, just so that all of you are uh, aware, the draft proposals, if you're not, the draft proposals on health reform for the House and the Senate are winding their way through to um, review and uh, comment both by members and their staff as well as the external community. Um, what is most notable about that, if any of you saw yesterday, the, the Monday Washington Post, um, there was an article on uh, the front page, top of the full, that approximately $1.4 million a day is being spent on lobbying on uh, health reform. Um, for most of us in the not-for-profit, uh, the, not, the non-profit community, we can't compete with those um, big dollars. So you really do have a very important role to play as advocates and constituents. While health reform is um, one of both the mega issues and something that needs to be tackled with uh, sooner rather than, than later, there have been a few key successes uh, in this Congress um, thus far. 
And uh, only one of them has a true, uh, well, actually two, um, the, the child health insurance and the um, family smoking prevention are truly bipartisan bills. The economic um, bailout uh, bill, not so great there. Uh, and who knows what will happen with health care and health care reform, but at least the debate has begun there. Um, as you'll know, there are some places to also look at very carefully uh, in, as you're working on health reform now from the uh, American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, the Economic Recovery Act, Reinvestment and Recovery Act, um, of issues that all of you care about, both with health IT and NIH, and uh, clearly with um, prevention. This slide, not to confuse you, but this is, in essence, as you look at this at your, your leisure, um, is how a bill becomes a law. And the reason I use this slide quite frequently is in looking at it, you're able to see that really what the issue here is there are a variety of places for advocacy and for lobbying um, throughout the process of uh, a bill that is first introduced, then becoming a law and being signed by um, the, the president. So with that as a, a, a backdrop, move on to um, looking at advocacy and uh, some of the tools. Um, first and foremost in defining advocacy, uh, you look at uh, both how do you influence um, outcomes, what's the public policy, how uh, resources are at, uh, allocated, and that which directly affects people's lives. And for those of you who participated, as, I'm sh as all of you did in uh, GINA last year, the directing, directly affecting people's lives became extremely important. Your role and your um, activities next, next week will convey that ability to, to both speak out, to champion your cause, what you believe in, with respect to um, health care and um, how that plays into the agenda of the uh, genetic alliance. Most notably with advocacy and, and lobbying, um, which are pretty much one and the same, but for some the comfort level with using advocacy um, is, is, is better felt, it, it, it scans um, the disciplines of looking at anything from gun control to smoking cessation to, um, you know, talking about the, the stoplight or street light on um, the corner. Each of those are examples of, um, of advocacy. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on um, what are the, you know, going through the 10 no's of advocacy, this first slide and, and the set, second slide, because that really will be covered but in, as we move through the remainder of, of the slides. But more to note that if you need a quick refresher before next week, think about some of these um, principles, what you need to know, and what you'll also experience in your preparation for going to the Hill um, next week and what follows after that. Uh, we start with what is a very fundamental question. Uh, why policymakers want to hear from you? Why policymakers want to hear for, for us? Um, and you know, first and, and foremost, um, as a, uh, you know, you are a stakeholder in your community. Uh, you're a constituent, and obviously, most obvious is that you are um, a voter. All of you come to the table with a certain degree of um, rather extensive expertise and personal experience that you can, can share related to um, genetics. Uh, you all have the ability and the, the capability to impact your community, whether it's a university, whether it's a nonprofit, 
whether it's uh, a, another kind of, of community uh, setting, and uh, you are the, the expert on uh, genetic e issues. Um, policymakers also want to know uh, the facts. They want reliable information. They want short, pithy uh, points that they're able to use in their remarks on um, the House or the Senate floor. They want stories of your experiences, how that will fold into um, health care and health care reform, what's your position on the issue, and you will, you will learn a, a lot more about that on uh, Thursday in the, the second uh, webinar. You have a personal message that you can, uh, can provide, which is critical, and you'll see that there really are um, sort of threads here of the personal, um, but keeping that um, factual. I can say in the six days that I have been here, the number of calls on health reform has been extraordinary. Uh, there is a belief that we have the facts at the Trust for America's Health, and you know, we happen to have a great deal of the facts related to um, prevention and, and wellness. And that we, we saw played out again with and continuing with the, the Genetic Alliance. There are a variety of, of advocacy tools, and primarily we're going to um, focus on uh, the face-to-face -face meeting, uh, the, the visit that you'll have um, next week. But as things uh, in the process move forward, there are going to be um, phone calls you can make, letters you can write, uh, both individually and, and as part of coalitions, emails to send, again, as constituents, uh, the presentation of, of, of testimony, something that um, I, I must say um, Sharon, as uh, president of the Genetic Alliance, has done uh, a great deal of, and um, the participation in, in advisory groups as well, another important component and tool in building relationships. There's also the other side of the coin, not only building the relationship, but how do you raise awareness. More of the um, external uh, of op-eds, letters to the editor of newspapers and magazines, um, press conferences that you can hold, and uh, all of those uh, will, for you, focus next week on what you can do. But you're, you're really looking at how do you communicate that message. And there are many ways that, that policymakers um, do want to hear from you, and you'll really focus on the face-to-face the meeting, and if um, you know time allows, we can talk about some others, uh, because that will become important after your meeting next week, the follow-up that needs to be done, and that is um, cr it's critical, sending the follow-up up letter. In communicating your, your message, um, the first question uh, to consider is, what is the timing? How is, does that need to be part of your, your strategy? Right now, health reform is front and center on the congressional agenda. So the timing is, um, is very good. And uh, hopefully, by next week, more progress um, would, be, would be and can be, can be made. Uh, in meeting with the decision makers and or the, the staff, so the congressional members and or congressional staff, you're raising awareness for the specificity of uh, genetics in the discussion on, uh, on health reform, and hopefully it will um, conclude quite favorably. And how you follow that up potentially as the Genetic Alliance with uh, communication and, and other media um, outlets um, will be most important. People will know that you're going to be on the Hill. So the possibility of 
responding to uh, the media is very important. And if you're bringing forward principles and you have those principles that you'll all utilize, and you'll see that in a, in a ladder slide, and you'll, you'll hear about that on Thursday, you, it will be important to be prepared if, you're, if that issue um, of genetics and health reform meld into the popular media. Uh, a case in point is uh, my first day on July 1st, the Trust for America's Health released its report on, on um, ob obesity. We have now touched, as of today, 77 million households, which is pretty extraordinary as far as I'm concerned. Um, and the hope is that's the kind of high touch you'd want. The reality is um, it, it fell at a good time. That report was most important because there's the discussion on prevention in, in health care reform. Uh, in meeting with your policy uh, makers and your, your congressional delegation, you want to build up a relationship. Since this is not interactive, I can't ask the, the usual question that I pose. Is this your first time on the Hill? Is this your first time visiting with that particular congressional office? Um, if it is, that profile of what is the first meeting, the introductory meeting, is a little, a, a little different from an ongoing relationship that you'll have, which everyone wants to, to have in the long run. That's where staff of the alliance becomes um, very important. <coughs> you want to um, establish your your credibility on um, an issue, you become the go-to um, both organization and as individuals uh, using yourself as the, uh, the, the resource, uh, the source of resource for uh, your congressional delegation. All of those become um, extremely important. You want to maintain that contact. And uh, this slide is probably some of you, if you were attending uh, last year, you, we've already talked about the, the strategy of uh, the timing and you really utilizing that to your um, advantage in maintaining an ongoing contact. Next week is just one of what will be uh, several meetings and follow-up and uh, letters that you will write. Uh, if there, as I understood from the opening of the presentation, some of you will be in, in a group, think through how you will plan your, your presentation that can be as, as little as two minutes to as much as 30 minutes with the staff or with the member of Congress. Just try and, and stay on the topic, um, focus on one issue, you're really bringing the issue um, to life. You're, be, you're bringing a potential solution to the uh, front and center to the members of, of Congress. Hopefully, all of you will have um, what is bullet number three in your meetings next week. It's a possible so it's responses to uh, going up to the hill with your talking points, which is, oh, I agree, this is great. Um, how do I get a hold of you? Um, when I need additional information, uh, where do I go? To whom do I speak? If the senator or the congressman is in the state, can he come and visit your lab or whatever it is? But some of you may not have um, what are considered the really easy visits of, oh, I agree, everything's great. Um, hopefully, you won't have um, what could potentially be a shorter meeting of the person disagreeing with everything you say and being a little hostile uh, about it. Those are what I would say are um, quit while you're ahead. That's the quick exit. Don't spend a lot of time um, chit-chatting. Um, what you also might hear is 
you know, I agree, but um, that gives you a um, an an opportunity. It's a little less easy than I agree entirely, but that gives you uh, another opportunity to make your pitch, to go back to your 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 talking points, um, what issues you're conveying from your own personal experience. And try to try to drive that message home. Um, one of the better meetings, as well, is the "I'm new" or "I don't know anything about health." The person doesn't know anything about health on the hill at this point in time. They've been living under a rock. But that said, you may have new staff um, and who are have not had a, a a hill experience, and that provides a great opportunity to provide information. Um, or any of the new members of, of Congress, and they're still relatively new. They've only been uh, members since uh, January, January 6th. So uh, there's a lot for them um, to learn, and that's the expertise that you can bring. When um, you get the sort of polite disagreement, if you can eke out in that conversation uh, the, the why and what you can do to be helpful, uh, that puts you in, in a, a good position. Um, if you can't or you don't sense, even though it's polite, it's going that way, um, try and back out of the door as quickly as you can. Um, my cardinal rule for meeting with uh, policymakers, whether it's on the local or the national le level. Um, and while these are sort of mine personally as adopted over many years of experience, it, it, they're self-evident. Um, you want to educate. Uh, you don't want to sound too surly in your educating that, that congressional office. Um, establishing the, the trust and uh, the expertise and the facts that you bring, and most importantly is to listen, to listen to what is said and listen to what is not being said. Don't overinterpret what the conversation is. Um, oftentimes, and this is why it's good when there are more than one person who is uh, going up to make that visit, is several people will hear several different things. So you're able to compare your notes and what you really heard and, uh, and, and piece it together, but also being very cognizant of, of listening. One very key question is, uh, and this is especially true in when you're making the visit and there is a um, I agree, but um, find out how is the mail running in that office, in that senator's office, in that representative's, um, uh, representative's office. They have congressional staff whose sole purpose in life is to respond to the thousands and hundreds of thousands of letters from their, um, across the board from their constituents. Uh, the mail provides, and that's inclusive of both um, written letters, which unless it's being faxed, don't bother, uh, and email traffic. You, you can gauge how issues are are evolving. Where is the the opposition? What are um, what are really the burning issues of constituents when you do, you know, pose how is the, ma the mail going on, on health reform? Uh, and again, as, we, as we've already noted, the, the personal stories that you can tell that they can then use on the House of the Senate floor become um, very, very Im important. Uh, on Thursday, you will have uh, a lot more time to uh, discuss health reform and the issues around, uh, around genetics and the key issues for the Genetic Alliance. Um, as all of you know, Secretary Sebelius is um, the Secretary of Health and Human Services, 
and she's from um, Kansas, and this came out just before uh, her uh, final um, confirmation, her swearing in, actually came about a day before the swearing in. And you'll see all of the key issues. Um, a couple of, uh, several weeks ago, you had, you know, Big Pharma, the drug companies, um, offering their compromise. Two weeks ago, uh, President Obama was at the AMA meeting. Uh, the, the hospitals are supposed to, uh, through, uh, through President, uh, Vice President um, Biden, announce how they're going to contribute to whatever the health reform proposal will be. But all of those are, are the, the key issues. Then, of course, you have um, what are the key principles for health reform that the President has been articulating since last year in the, the campaign. How you take these, um, these principles and measure them uh, against what are the um, key issues for the genetic alliance and the activities that you're going to be engaged in will be very important and as important as focusing on uh, how the House and Senate plans as they continue to evolve and how you continue to have, have input, measuring up what your activities, what your concerns are with the issues that you bring forward from genetic discrimination to genetic testing, newborn screening, and um, one of the mega issues that there's not been a lot of chatter about recently is on, on health IT. How all that measures with the president's um, portability, your choice of plans, uh, the improvement of safety and quality of the care, let alone um, health disparities, prevention, and wellness, is extremely um, important. So in the minutes that we have um, left, an opportunity for, for Q&A on both my end and, uh, and the staff from the Genetic Alliance, um, this is an extraordinary opportunity that all of you will have. Uh, advocating bringing your issue to the Hill, which is very specific and in part unique, um, as it's unique for ensuring that children are in the mix, uh, how prevention and wellness are, and, and public health are, are folded into um, any plan. So taking that opportunity next week, making sure you follow up, that is the thank you note. Um, put on your gloves and write your thank you note is extremely uh, important. It gives you another opportunity to uh, follow up, to um, provide um, expertise in a short and pithy way, something on paper that staff can uh, can use. And, you know, as this final slide indicates, if no one else uh, does it, you've got to do it. So with that, um, I will look for questions. Okay, great, Karen. That was really excellent. I always, I always love seeing the pictures of previous genetics on the hills in your slides, too. That was really fun to see. Um, yeah, this is great. Um, it's been a, that was a very um, informative presentation. Um, and during your presentation, we had a few questions submitted from the audience. Um, I'm just real fast going to hammer through Genetics Beyond the Hill um, real specific questions. And then we've got a couple um, for you, Karen, that your advice and input will be really crucial on. Um, first, we received a question, um, can we bring copies of our organization's materials to Genetics Day on the Hill? Um, the short answer is yes. Um, we'll allow um, each organization to bring one material, um, a brochure, a one-pager to Genetics Day on the Hill to include in the briefing packets that we um, leave with offices at the end of each visit. And also, um, 
if you'd like to hand them out to interested individuals um, and participants at Genetics Down the Hill there. Um, we will not t collect these beforehand, though. Um, you'll have to bring the copies and put them in your briefing packets if you want to distribute them. Um, we do really want this day is all about the collective voice, um, the we, so it's, it's really not about our own special interests in our organizations, but we do recognize that this is a crucial networking event for you and developing novel partnerships in, the, um, in advocacy, and so we're really excited to provide that opportunity for you, but we will not have, for example, a table um, at Genetics Down the Hill where you can um, put your materials out. Um, those will be for your own distribution as um, you see fit. Um, another question that we received, um, will there be internet access at the meeting and will people be able to um, view the meeting from um, uh, virtually, I guess? Um, the answers really are, um, we will not supply internet access at the meeting, so if you um, if you require internet access, um, please just let me know. It's something we can coordinate with the um, group beforehand, but it's something we'll have to coordinate together. Um, the actually um, participating virtually in the meeting, um, we will not be able to provide um, just based upon the um, collaborations and conversations going on. Um, we're not going to be able to videotape anything because we're going to really want to um, kind of provide that platform for really free, unfettered thought. Um, or surrounding these issues, so we will not um, have direct video access to Genetics Day on the Hill. However, we will have people blogging and Twittering from Genetics Day on the Hill. Um, so just uh, keep that in mind if you want to kind of share in the energy in that sense. Um, and then uh, finally, um, will you have information about committee appointments at Genetics Day on the Hill? Um, I apologize if I hammered through that pretty fast at the beginning of the presentation. Um, you will have information about the committees um, and their um, about the committees that each member of Congress belongs to, as well as um, their sponsorship of various bills that we're interested in. So that's um, just a quick, real quick and dirty of um, a couple of the questions that have been coming in specific to genetics down on the hill. Um, so Karen, I'm going to um, ask you one question that was really interesting, um, and I think your input will be really helpful. Um, what I guess there's there's concern that um, I guess staffers are sick of hearing about um, health reform, and um, they how how what are kind of the staffer attitudes around health care reform? Um, are they sick of hearing of other interests? Are they going to view us as just another voice coming to the hill to talk about health care reform, or is it going to be our, what what is going to help us make our message unique in the swarm of um, messages that are going to the hill right now? I think well, that's one of the reasons that it's important to look at um, what your issues and concerns are, what you're articulating, and measure that up against the current proposals, um, as well as uh, what the administration is thinking. But I, I put the administration at a, a secondary level, uh, looking first at the House and Senate proposals how there are uh, opportunities for the issues that you've um, articulated will be very important, because that will be a question. Hill staff, um, you know, let's face it, this has been going on since uh, late January, and truth be known, it's been going on since the beginning of the, the campaign season uh, in 2007, 2008. If we really want to go back, we can go back to 1993-94 and um, that great experience that, that many of us had. Uh, so to the extent that you are providing both new, unique issues, that will be helpful. And in making the Hill appointments, however that's being done, whether it's being done by the um, genetic alliance or it's being done by um, individuals, I would hit upon that. Um, this is something that you've probably not thought about. And uh, we want to spend five minutes with you. We'll leave you some paper if you've got questions so that it's on their radar screen. Because I'm not certain that uh, similar to how research plays out um, overall, in healthcare reform. Not a lot of chatter, but a little bit here and there on uh, medical liability. You hear some of that as a distraction. So 
my sense is from what I am, have gathered in my previous life on the, the kids' part, uh, not a lot was, was addressed on, on children. So one of the roles that the Academy of Pediatrics had to do is to try and ensure that children weren't thrown under the bus. So I would say the same thing um, for the critical I issues that uh, you have all um, outlined. How do they mesh with um, the House and the Senate? Uh, one other comment that I, I'd, I'd like to make in regards to the, the last, the, your prior question is uh, on the House uh, and it's house.gov and senate.gov, you can easily get to your representative's bio. I would encourage you to take a quick look at that before you hop on a plane, train, bus, however you're, you're getting here. Uh, to give you a sense, especially if you're visiting with new members, of what are their issues, what are they, their concerns, uh, what have they raised, vis-a-vis -vis, um, health reform or any other health care issue, um, how they voted on, on, on GINA last year would also give you some sense that, oh, this is not too foreign to them. Uh, and I, I would encourage that. And maybe when you send out additional information, and I did not look at all of the um, FAQ, so I don't know whether that's on there as, as well, so I do apologize. You might just add that as another mechanism to inform yourself um, about them, because you already know what you're going to say. Uh, you already have your own um, expertise and experiences you will bring. But get a, have a little bio. Um, you, you will be surprised that uh, you may find out that if you don't know already, and if the folks who are from universities, hopefully you know all of your key members who are uh, alums from your institution, but you may find out some unique information. Uh, so I, I'd encourage you to do that. Yeah, that's a really, that's a really great tip for our um, participants, certainly. Um, very great tip. Um, so we do have one quick question, and you touched on this during your presentation, but it looks like we might need a little bit more emphasis. Um, surrounding exactly the literacy level um, around health issues, um, maybe even um, take that step further to genetics issues um, of these staffers, is this really going to be an educational opportunity for um, participants in Genetics Day on the Hill? And how much time um, we've got a lot of, um, this is a really good question because um, we've got a lot of complex messages that are going to the Hill. And so how do we balance um, getting our message out and ensuring that they have the proper tools um, to even talk about the issue? Uh, what I urge and encourage and what I, I've done in my personal and professional life in, um, uh, in advocacy and lobbying is um, pick and choose the one or two issues. You know, don't go in with the articulation and the chatter on multiple issues. Um, that's fine uh, of, you know, background paper, but choose one or two that, and, and what the key points are. Presume that folks don't know much, um, and, and I'm, I'm being polite. So go with that presumption that the staff uh, probably, it's been a long time since they even took science, even though the staff are, are going to be um, fairly young. Uh, and you know, not all of us touched on genetics in um, undergraduate school, uh, let alone high school. So uh, go with that presumption. And that's where it will be important to, to edu educate, but you know, don't get too condescending in, in that. But do presume that their literacy level is pretty low. Um, and to the, to the extent that you have concrete, simple, reasonable uh, facts that you can present, examples that you can, can give so that everybody gets it, um, starting with, so what is genetics? 
uh, the very basic. Uh, that will be, will be helpful. Thank you so much, Karen, for such an informative discussion. This was really excellent. Sure. And if you have questions after um, uh, and they get them to you, email them to me, and um, I'm happy to respond. Excellent. Yeah, we'll have, uh, Karen and I will certainly work together to make sure that all your questions are answered. So that wraps up our program for today. Um, a reminder of our um, July events. Um, our conference runs July 17th through 19th. That's Friday through Sunday of next week. Um, Genetics Day on the Hill and Gene Screen immediately precede that. Genetics Day is on um, July 16th, um, 8 to 5, and then Gene Screen immediately follows at 6.30. So it will be a packed week next week, but we're definitely looking forward to providing it for you. Um, if you have any questions, you can see my email address at the bottom of the screen. It's acornell at geneticalliance.org. Um, but otherwise, we were just so happy to be able to provide this program for you today. Um, another big thank you to Karen Hendricks, and thank you to all of us for joining us. Uh, we look forward to speaking with you at future Genetic Alliance webinars and um, seeing you at our annual events. So have a wonderful day, everyone, and we'll speak with you soon. Goodbye.